at the uh, Hill Rising show, um, uh, Crystal Ball and uh, Sager, I don't know the guy's last name. And Jetty. And Jetty um, have struck out on their own. They have a new show. I don't know if it's launched yet. But um, so Ryan Grimm, I don't know if he's filling in or it's permanent or what. Are they doing one of those like, um, you know, rolling uh, auditions? But he's on with Emily J Jashinsky. I don't know. Who is Emily Jashinsky? Do we know? She's formerly of the Federalist. Okay. So she's a, the Federalist. she's a right winger. Or she uh, is at the Federalist. Not sure. Right. Yeah. She's a, she's, so she's a right winger. And this um, exchange was really interesting because I grew up with Hannity and Combs. Now, both Hannity and Combs, not very bright. But Hannity was much like um, stronger willed and they and, and Combs was always outmatched. So Combs was sort of like the, um, the Washington generals to the um, to the um, uh, what do you call it? The Globetrotters, the Harlem Globetrotters. And uh, you get it's nice to see the left have like the goods and the right you know presumably this person's an editor at the federalist they should be top notch but watch this well yes watch this because perhaps not yeah maybe. Uh, anywhere at the at the global map and you can probably find hold on i'm sorry know, at pause some it. point we should just give context this is okay. a conversation about ilhan omar's tweet where she um they they have a debate essentially about yeah. Il and just to be clear ilhan omar's uh tweet was basically saying look the jurisdiction of the international criminal court should apply to everybody who has committed uh you know atrocities and whether you're you know uh the taliban or america you you, you have atrocities they're not necessarily equating them but they have um they have cr all crossed a certain. Well, threshold. if she were to equate them, I mean, the body count for I, I don't even. It's just right. Let's, wait, let's just pay attention <laughs> to it. In Vietnam, or just in Congo, uh, or just pick, you could throw a dart uh, anywhere at the at the global map, and you can probably find you know at some point throughout the 20th century, the U.S. I intervening to undermine you know, uh, uh, some, some type of social democratic effort and backing the most vicious right, uh, right wing elements. And the irony of them calling this anti-Semitism when the U.S. very consciously and explicitly out of World War II allied itself with former Nazis, helped Nazis escape justice, you know, uh, was, was complicit in what was called the rat line, you know, the, the, with getting Nazis um, out, out of Germany and, and into these death squads that were run by the United States and, and deployed in an anti-communist fashion against the Soviet Union and against leftist elements in, in South America. But who so, ended the Holocaust? I mean, what country? The Soviet Union, actually. <laughs> okay, but. I mean, the, the Soviet Union did that. No, the, I mean, we, the we, Soviet Union. We walked Union... in after, they, after, this, after the Russians had suffered, what, 20 plus million uh, casualties and, and marched into Germany. Sure, but if, without the United States' intervention, a heck of a lot more people would have died in that atrocity. For, yes, and I'm, I'm glad the Soviet Union and the United States allied to beat Nazi Germany, but the Nazi Germany, the, the Nazis themselves then allied with the United States to go after the Soviet Union and to go after communist and social democratic elements in South America. And that's that, that's an actual part of the history. But, right, but again, there's lives being saved in that process, a lot of lives being saved in that process, and a lot of Americans putting their lives ooh. on the line and dying to save those lives. Sure, ooh. but many, many, many fewer than uh, Soviet lives died to, to take on the Nazis. But that doesn't change the fact that the United States intervened and risked lives Lots and lots of lives uh, compared to what it may have been complicit in or what it may have been lives it may have costed on the other side of that. I think, again, the, the balance there is clearly on the side of good <laughs> in a way that you can't apply to the Taliban or Hamas. Or Hamas. I would much rather have the uh, I, I would take the establishment government of the United States over the governing forces and the establishment of the Taliban any day. I'm glad we're in the American empire, not the Taliban wait, empire. Wait, wait till you hear who funded the Taliban at the very beginning. Well, there <laughs> <laughs> or Hamas um, to say yeah. uh, and, 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 and Hamas actually yeah. I mean while we're at it um, uh, I mean first off that was um, it was almost like cruel to watch um, <laughs> yeah thank the, you Federalist for your talent uh, the, like 
like a cat with a bird basic elements of 20th century history and it's you know these are not obscure facts the soviet union's uh role in world war ii this is not obscure the liberation uh, of auschwitz etc uh, the i mean this is i even like a cursory like like when i was a kid we had encyclopedias and like <laughs> that that's like the wikipedia version uh, it, like the wikipedia version like just look it up on wikipedia i mean her laugh is really amazing the yes. <laughs> she's and nervous she's nervous i would imagine so and yes grim is right it is the united states that created the taliban by funding madrasas in pakistan so that there would be a counterbalance to the soviet union in afghanistan um this is this is not controversial or, frankly, very obscured either. And part uh, of the same project that he was pointing out to her about the relationship with Nazis post-World War II. Yes. And, well, I mean, it's a similar, um, you know. Uh, Anti-communist project. Exactly. Yes. Hamas. Same CIA. Hamas was, um, was, was created and helped the creation of which was, was midwifed, I think you could say by Israel as a counterbalance to uh, the PLO and or, you know, what ultimately is now, you know, sort of referred to as the Palestinian Authority. Um, and so uh, the, <laughs> a, a certain basic amount of history would, um, would, would be in order, I think, if you're going to, to comment on these things. It's pretty stunning. Well, but but similarly to the response to Ilhan Omar's line of questioning of uh, Tony Blinken and of like her tweet that kind of summarized where her question was coming from, they are so terrified of being ripped out of American exceptionalism and this cozy blanket of we are this force of good. She keeps trying to return to it and Ryan wasn't giving her what she wanted to hear, essentially. And it's just so childish in it's very, you know, purest form. Um, and, even, and, and let me just say, even if you believe that the United States is a net good in the world, and I think there is an argument for that, the idea that that excuses atrocities um, or killings of civilians um, is just absurd. I mean, you know, the, the idea that if you think that America has been a net good in the history of the world, and and, and it, it's it's debatable, but just even if I stipulate that, the, does that mean that the United States should not be held to account for when for actions that are not good? I mean, just to make it really simple, I mean, it's just bizarre. Well, like, it's a, it, Bill Hemmer, what we played earlier in the show, they want flag waving, and it's just it's that's that's the reality of like what is at the core of this. It's it's wanting to feel okay and completely cozy in one's nationalism yeah. and American exceptionalist perspective. It's so facile. It, it is. Um, it, it, I used to talk about uh, Rush Limbaugh this way. Um, now that he's dead, I, I, I don't feel any differently about talking about this. But his job was to, to take any doubt that a conservative would have in their mind about anything and erase it and erase it in a way that say like doubt is doubt in and of itself is bad. I mean, that's what Bill Hemmers is crying for there. It's like, is it really hard to find flag waving in America? I mean, honestly, like, is it really hard to find expressions of American exceptionalism? No, All I see not. is Antifa burning flags. I don't know what America you live in. Like Bill Hemmer, the idea is like that we need that like what he resents is not that there is a net, um, an you know a, a um, there is uh, an overwhelming amount of non flag waving. It's that there has to be only flag waving. There cannot be even anything to crack open a slight bit about a doubt about who we are or what we do in every circumstance at every time because it begins to shake their fundamentalism. I mean, ultimately, that's what this is about. It is about their fundamentalism. A fundamentalism and, of, uh, yeah, of American exceptionalism and just like, yeah, it's, it, it's the reason I'm adding on to it is just because it's religious in that very 
Yeah, well, um, it's, and it's well, fervor. You can have market fundamentalism. You can have this uh, this American exceptionalism uh, fundamentalism. It is a fundamentalism that they are afraid of allowing any doubt to creep in because that begins to undercut the premise of what they're talking about. Um, let's go. Uh, but that was fun. I mean, I, that. I mean, if that, More of that. If that happens, if that happens on a regular basis. I'm going to start watching Rising. I, just, I, I love Ryan's delivery too, right? He's he's so precise and calm. 